Hey everybody, Rodaman here, thanks for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program. So last episode, we landed on the Mun without really patch conics or maneuvers or any of that jazz. This episode, uh, we'll, well, we'll see where it takes us. So taking a look at our missions, we have an Explore the Mun milestone mission that I'm going to accept. So I guess we're headed back to the Mun. Uh, we also have, um, well, let's see what other kind of missions we can scratch up. I'm going to decline some missions, which I know costs us a little bit of uh, science. So science data around Kerbin, we'll get that one. I'm looking specifically for uh, maybe planting a flag on the Mun mission, which tends to be a one star. Um, let's see. Come on, come on. Oh, did I just accept that? Uh, oh, I, I'm just gonna decline that again. It doesn't cost me very much. I'm not all that worried about reputation. All right, here, plant flag on Mun. So all the ones that declined, completing my planting the flag gives me more rep than all of the different missions I declined. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Science data from space around the Mun, again, so now we have a nice loadout of returning to the Mun. So let's go and build a ship that does just that. Uh, first things first, I want to use some of the science and money. So I will upgrade my tracking station and upgrade my R&D and upgrade my launch pad, which leaves us very, very, very little money left over. Uh, so let's see if I can take an advance. I'm going to take an advance on rescuing Lumen from orbit around Kerbin. And that gives us a little bit more, more money to work with. And I will also take an advance on rescuing Tanfred. Okay. Uh, oh, shouldn't have gone into the VAB yet. Now I am going to use some of the science I got. So the first thing I want to unlock is kickback SRBs because they're really, really efficient solid fuel boosters. Uh, then I want to start working towards more science objects. So the way to tell if an object gives you science is if you mouse over it like this um, and it says science experiment, that is something that can yield you extra science. Uh, I know that sounds really simple, but there's only so many science objects uh, left for me to unlock. So there's this uh, seismic accelerometer. Uh, what else is there? There is the gravioli detector. Um, there is um, the atmospheric uh, fluid spectrometer thingy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be working towards the seismic accelerometer. So I'm going to get electrics, and I'm going to get advanced electrics, but I don't yet have enough science to get the electronics for it. So the remainder, 116, I'm going to spend on advanced construction. I like advanced construction. Okay, so now we have spent our science. Let's go back into the VAB. I'm going to open up my RHD5. Why reinvent the wheel? And I'm going to scrap all of these radial... Uh, lower quality f uh, solid fuel in lieu of setting up a higher quality one. And let's take a look. We need to plant a flag, transmit scientific data from space. I'm going to ignore the two rescue missions. Uh, and then orbit the Mun, spacewalk around the Mun, and then return. All right. So that's the full mission loadout. I'm not going to add anything else to this pod. I like this sort of stage here. All I'm going to do, uh, for simplicity's sake, is to add some uh, decouplers at the bottom here. And then add some, uh, some kickback SRBs. So let's move these decoupling stages here. And then add some kickbacks. Have them lock in place. All right. And put that on the first stage. Cool. 
let's go ahead and strut them up a bit so they don't wobble around and they don't crash into each other. So I'm going to strut the outside two to one another. And then I'm going to strut the inside one to the outside ones. There. And that should prevent the death wobbles. Uh, let's go ahead and save this as RHD6. It is... Yes. Uh, let me see. It now is heavier than the last rocket we launched. Uh, is it cheaper? That's the question. Yeah, it is actually a little bit cheaper. This one's 35k. The last one was 43k. So it's cheaper. Uh, now the next question is, is it, is it more efficient? So let's go ahead and open up our um, thrust to weight ratio. Let's reduce this down to 55. All right, and now my thrust to weight ratio is just above one. And save it. And now let's open RHD5. This red is 34. And this red reads as 35. So it's a little bit more bang for my buck. Actually, a lot more. It's cheaper and it has more thrust. Uh, so if the last craft got us to the MUN, this craft will certainly get us to the MUN. No, no issues. Um, all right, let's go. Let's go to the MUN. Let's go ahead and launch. And now that I have patch conics, I don't even have to eyeball it anymore, which is going to be quite nice. All right, and... Uh, before I do that, actually, let's revert to assembly real quick. I wanted to change my mission flag over to my logo. In fact, what I'm going to do is change all the flags around Kerbal Space Center to my logo. Let's do that. That is a, uh, a tip that I got by Galactic Virus. And let's now launch... And you can have a different mission flag for each mission. So if you wanted to um, have like a mission, I mean, I, I'm not much of an artist. I don't want to make mission flags for every mission and have them all be individualized. But if you wanted to do that, you could. So here we go. As you can see, my logo is now on the rocket. And let's launch. And it's going to be a very gradual slow launch because we have a low thrust to weight ratio. It's efficient. It just uh, takes a while. But it's a slightly more elegant ship um, than the last one, which was really sort of bootstrapped. This one is definitely a little bit more elegant. And now with... Uh, oh, so here is Lumon, who we agreed to rescue. And then uh, really, really, really close to Kerbin in a tight orbit is Tanfred. Uh, so we'll be rescuing both of those. And hopefully I'll receive the milestone mission to rendezvous two vessels within orbit because that's basically what a rescue mission is. So here is my beautiful launch. And Mr. Man mentioned that in maneuver mode, I can actually see my apoapsis. So if I somehow managed to cut solid fuel boosters, which is impossible, um, we would have an apoapsis of 15 kilometers, 16, 17, so on and so forth. Oh, I'm doing some tilting here. I'm going to hold A to fight against that. I actually do want to tilt to 90, but not so sharply that I start flip-flopping. I didn't really add any fins to this ship. Um, so it has less atmospheric control than it could. Okay, here we go. Definitely getting a higher apoapsis here. And we're headed to space. All right, let's separate. Now that I have patch conics, I can actually do pretty cool maneuvers. So I can set up 
a scheduled burn, for instance. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to schedule a burn like that. And now it will tell me when my maneuver node is and how long I have to burn for. This is incorrect, by the way. It's uh, less burn time than that. It will correct itself once I'm in atmosphere uh, because my engines are more efficient in atmosphere. So as you can see, my burn time is about two minutes and I am one minute away. When I am one minute and four seconds, I'm gonna start my burn. Uh, the way I calculate that is you wanna average the time to over your burn time. So if the burn time is, let's say one minute, 30 seconds to your maneuver, you want to start burning. So for the first 30 seconds, you're on one half of the peak and the next 30 seconds, you're on the other half, sort of averaging the time. So at this burn time, I want to go at like 104, which is right now. And this will get me, if done perfectly, it will get me the dotted line planned maneuver. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just entering orbit. So it's not that big of a deal. And you are mm, probably familiar with this uh, vessel, because this is what I took to the MUN. I just got it into higher orbit with kickback SRBs instead of uh, instead of uh, strapped together lower quality ones. So at this point, now that I'm just doing a scheduled burn, I want to mention uh, some feedback I received. So I received a lot of feedback about um, getting science around Kerbal Space Center or trying to min-max the amount of science I get. I don't really care, honestly. You just have to land on min miss and mun a few times and you basically have all the science you ever need. I'm more interested, in, interested to get the milestone missions to unlock more interesting missions. So yes, I know that I can like min-max it by getting EVA reports and crew reports and do all that jazz. I just don't care, honestly. It's not that I don't appreciate your feedback. It's just it's not worth my time to, for instance, build a rover to drive around Kerbal Space Center to get every little last ounce of science because the simple fact of the matter is uh, you can get all the science that you need to unlock literally every part that's in the game by um, without even really leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence. You don't actually even have to travel to Eve or Duna or uh, Moho or Drez or any of these other planets. You can get every little piece of science unlocked before you even leave your home system, which is ridiculous. But that means that, yeah, I don't really have to min-max my science. It's, it's not as important as you think it would be. All right, so back to my circularization of my orbit. Let's focus back on that. And here's my periaps is getting up. Just needs to be above 70K. It's above 70K. So we've, we're now orbiting. Now the really easy thing with patch conics is I can left click, select MUN is my target. And then let's do a transfer burn. And we can just add a maneuver to plan the transfer. And as you can see here, I can actually see my intercept. Um, so I want to, let's say I wanted to transfer with a periaps of 10K. I could actually schedule that and it will tell me exactly what I need to do to get a 10K transfer burn, which makes patch conics a really powerful, powerful tool. So at this point, it would be a periaps of 286 and I can just tweak it around to get exactly what I want. So if I want like a periaps of 50, uh, 10K is really low, but let's say 50K. Here we go, a 50K periaps. And then once we have the maneuver all set up and scheduled, we can just click this button to warp to next maneuver and it will bring us to where our next maneuver will take place. And obviously uh, this is a lot easier than eyeballing. And then we just go on the nav ball and look towards the blue indicator, which is where the transfer burn will take place. Uh, my burn time is 51 seconds, so about 26 seconds away from the node, I will start my burn. Right now. Uh, 
And then all we have to do is pick a new biome for the mud. We don't want to return, let's turn uh, flags on. We don't want to return to Northwest Crater because it won't really yield any science for us. We need to return to a new crater or a new uh, biome of the mud. If you don't know your biomes, you can hold left alt and F12. It's kind of cheating, but turn biome visibility on. And you can see all the biomes. So you can see all the biomes for Kerbin, for instance, of you know, midlands, lowlands, highlands, shores, oceans, so on and so forth. Uh, but I got to focus on my transfer right now. My maneuver. There. No, that's, that's good enough. All right, let me turn off biomes. But the, this biome map also applies to the Mun uh, over there. So as you can see, it has different biomes as well. It has like something like a dozen min miss has a uh, less than that but all right, at this point i'm gonna warp time until we are within the mun's sphere of influence so all i did was i clicked on this uh projected um trajectory and you can warp to any section of this trajectory actually uh lumen's craft is almost it's it's pretty similar to a Mun orbit, oddly enough. All right, and now I can plan a circularization around the Mun. Oops, let's do a retrograde burn. There we go, and let's take a look. We need to transfer space around Mun. All right, well I could do that. So first off, to do that, I can get an EVA report. Uh, the EVA report doesn't even yield any science, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to do a... Let's, uh, let's actually do the burn here and get a really low orbit. Because that will actually yield us science. There's no point to fulfilling a contract. If we can also fulfill the contract and yield science, that's uh, so much better. So let's go ahead and advance to next maneuver. Ta-da! Um, accelerate to the node. We'll burn at seven seconds out. Which is, it's really just half of your burn time. That's the easiest way to remember. Doesn't need, even need to be all that perfect. So here is seven seconds out. And we're just looking for a low orbit. That's good enough. All right, and is my science data different because I'm closer? Yes, it is. As you can see, it is different. Uh, so we will use half of our science uh, acquiring objects to log low orbit around the Mun. And then we'll save the other half for when we land. So because I don't want to land in the dark, I'm going to accelerate time um let's aim for this crater here so i will do a prograde or a retrograde burn for a planned descent all right and now i'm going to warp to here and we will do another sort of retrograde burn what i'm doing is getting rid of all the horizontal velocity so we can come straight down. And I'm gonna switch from orbit to surface. And we'll try to land right here where it's it looks to be flatter. And accelerate time a little bit. And we'll land right around there. Good. Yeah, you wouldn't want to land right on the rim of a crater. It would be uh, quite challenging to uh, balance a ship, especially with really bad landing struts like I have. My landing gear just would not be up to snuff for a uh, 
an edge of a crater landing. All right, let's get rid of some extra velocity here. Make sure to switch from sea level to land level, because if you're going off of sea level, you're going to have a bad time unless your landing target is literally at sea level. Um, a lot of Minmus will be at sea level, but Mun doesn't really have sea level. Some things will functionally be at sea level, but I wouldn't, I don't, don't plan on landing like that. It will hurt. <laughs> it will hurt hard. Uh, let's just uh, feather off some of our, uh, some of our velocity here. So we have, uh, well, I'm not going to focus on the contracts right now because I'm, I should focus on landing. And the slower we come in, the better. So we don't bounce or anything. There we go. We have a nice stable landing. Um, so the contracts. We definitely got science from around Mun, so I'll collapse that. And we need to get science from around Kerbin. But, and we need a plant flag on the Mun. And I did an orbital spacewalk around the Mun already. So yeah, let's do our Mun science stuff. So we are at the Mun's East Far Side Crater. So let's get some new science from East Far Side Crater. And now all of my science objects have done it. I'm going to get a crew report from the crater. And then I will take a surface sample which we unlocked from the R&D, which yields a whole lot of science. Get an EVA report and plant my flag to complete the contract. So you can see Rodamont plays logo as a flag. Uh, Mun's East Far Side Crater. Second mission. All right, we're done here. I'm not building a space base or anything like that, so we can just go ahead and, or planet base, it wouldn't be a space base. Jetpack back on, we're back on the, uh, the little ship here. Um, I'm just going to uh, blast off. And really soon our side rockets, yep, they're already out of fuel, so let's ditch them. Hopefully they won't blow up our flag. <laughs> That'd be funny, just eradicating your own flag. And I'll establish a uh, 270 degree orbit for fun. So, so once you're blasting off, you can establish really any other orbit. You can establish a polar orbit, which would go over the poles. Uh, you can establish, you know, really any orbit you want. Now let's clear out some of these contracts. So we need to do, um, let's see. Scientific data from space around Kerbin. And as you can see with the patch conics, it will tell me when my sphere of influence changes. So let's go ahead and just accelerate time a bunch. This isn't the most efficient way to get from Mun to Kerbin. I, it's just easy. Now that we're around Kerbin, I'm going to do a uh, in a retrograde burn. I have plenty of fuel, so I'm not really all that worried. I will try to get as close to uh, Kerbal Space Center as I can, though. We are going to be dipping into the atmosphere here. So I'm going to accelerate time. Actually, now that we're in high space orbit over Kerbin, uh, it would be a, probably a pretty good time to grab some science, right? So let's do a little EVA. Uh, oops, I'm accelerating time. Now let's do the EVA. Grab a little EVA report. Here we are in high space. 
And board. Uh, what was our... What were this... All right, so that's from the creator itself. I'm not uh, resetting these. I'm just reviewing what they are because I forget. Okay, so it was low orbit around the moon. All right. Uh, now let's accelerate time to when we are a lot closer to Kerbin. Wow, it is accelerating time slowly. And Kerbal Space Center is here. So if we don't want to land in the middle of nowhere, we will have to uh, reestablish a higher orbit. So we can add a little maneuver for this. So this... Uh, let's, let's do this in the most fuel efficient way possible. Because we are low on fuel. So this establishes a, a little bit better of an orbit. There. And accelerate time once again. And now I'm going to, uh, if we want to land at Kerbal Space Center, I'm going to do a periaps burn or a uh, retrograde burn. I probably don't have enough fuel to really get exactly where I want to go. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. I'm going to leave a little fuel to deorbit. In the future, when I build more complex crafts and more fuel efficient crafts, I can uh, do this a little bit better. So I'm going to take uh, one orbiting pass. I might orbit a few times and look for a nice window to deorbit. Uh, there is no like food or oxygen or anything. Your Kerbals will live forever in stable orbits. Uh, so it will be next pass will be my landing pass. So as you can see, my periaps and the Kerbal Space Center kind of have to align uh, a little bit. So this point, I'll do a retrograde burn and that will take us kind of close to Kerbal Space Center. I hope. Close enough to refund a little bit. I'm actually going to uh, burn like this to raise it up because I, I forgot to account for the rotation of the planet. All right, that's good enough. Uh, let's accelerate time once again and come in for our landing. Yeah, as you can see, we're gonna be landing pretty close to KSC, Kerbal Space Center. Um. All right, a little bit of retrograde burn again. Use up the last of our fuel, because we have fuel, we might as well use it. Or it will explode. All right, there's the last of our fuel. Jettison that phase. Phase prograde, so our heat shield is coming in. Oh no, phase retrograde, sorry. So their heat shield is facing the correct direction. And now hope that uh, we get close to KSC and we don't burn up in the atmosphere. I do have my time accelerated. I'm gonna reduce it a little bit. Sometimes when you have a um, time acceleration when you're doing aero braking, it, it sort of screws up the physics calculations of aero braking and you can end up doing some smashy smash. Which is not good. No one wants to crash a ship. So what's weird is, it looks like I'm crazy on fire, but I'm actually really, really high up in the atmosphere, and not actually slowing down all that much. We slow down a lot more in this sort of blue zone here. Um, so actually, I think this is probably a, uh, a, a graphical sort of mistake. I think when you're this high up in the atmosphere with this thin of an atmosphere, you wouldn't get this kind of, you know, flaming result. Meteors, for instance, get a lot brighter as they get lower in the atmosphere, but when they're really, really high in the atmosphere, they don't look like burning balls of, of hell like we look like now. But now that we're in a denser atmosphere, the lower we get, the denser it gets. Uh, as you can see, our speed is drastically changing. And yeah, I overshot KSC a little bit, but... 
I eyeballed it. And I didn't have enough fuel to do a lot of corrections. And now we're in denser atmosphere and we're moving a lot slower. And as we get lower and denser, I can also pop the uh, shootout. And here is the uh, island runway, which is a, another runway that you can use. And I'll accelerate down to about 1.2 with speed. Okay, there we go. And now we're doing a nice splashdown. And I can actually see KSC. So this isn't a fail for arrow braking. It's certainly better than our last mission, which I really roughed it. I, j I just was trying to get down. I didn't really care. So my um, my last phase just splashed down somewhere near me. I heard it. And here we are. And let's recover. And this should give us a lot of science because we did soil samples and we got space science and all sorts of other stuff. All right. So we, we gained 200, uh, 500 uh, 23 science from this mission. We regain 96% of our value and uh, completed a whole lot of contracts. So if we take a look at mission control, the rescuing from orbits are the only ones we didn't do. Uh, here is a milestone explore Minmus that I'm going to accept. Planting a flag on Mun. I know I'm going to go back to the Mun, so I'll accept that as well. Um... We have a lot of money now that we completed those contracts. So I have enough money to probably not need to nickel and dime anything. Uh, in fact, I'll upgrade my runway and upgrade my uh, space plane hangar uh, with some of that cash. And what kind of time do I have? I am just about over time. So that was a perfect place to end. There was a very, very good example of what a MUN landing looks like when you have the proper patched conics and um, weight restrictions lifted and all that stuff. Um, I highly advise if you're new to Kerbal Space Program to use my patch conics and maneuver to get to MUN rather than to eyeballing it. Eyeballing it is very, very hard. Planning your maneuvers, much, much, much easier. Uh, so if you have any feedback for me, tips of any type, or just any sort of suggestions, drop me a line. If you have any questions about anything I did, let me know. I'm happy to answer the best of my ability, and I do hope that you tune in next time. Thank you all for watching. Adios.